personal finance expert and MeVest founder, Leslie Ann Scorgi, joining us on Canada Now. And Leslie Ann, a recent article of yours in The Star discusses seven ways to get a bigger tax refund. And isn't that relevant right now? Because we're all getting prepared. I know you spent your past five days doing it and getting organized. So there's nothing to fear. 70% of individuals are actually due for a refund. The other 30% may owe nothing or a little bit, you know, and then there's the outliers who definitely owe a lot. Nothing to be scared of. The first way for you to save is through the simplified home office deduction. So I don't know if you remember, but at the beginning of the pandemic, when everybody started working from home, the government introduced uh, a tax credit, if you will, for anybody working from home. Well, they decided to extend that, which is excellent. And that is up to $500 that you could be eligible for if you worked from home last year. And look, more people are going to be working from home, like versus two years ago, there are going to be more people that work from home because they're like, hey, I can actually do this from home. And companies might be offering those incentives to to keep their talent or uh, get new talent by saying, hey, you can work for us. You can still work from home. So do you think that this is going to be a tax credit, a, a deduction that we could take advantage of from here on out? It's a great question. I, I don't know. I wish I had the crystal ball on that, but I can tell you. So if companies decide not to return to work, they probably will have to, to go the route of giving their employees the T2200 form. So that is not simplified <laughs> and it's a lot more complex, but that is an option for employers who want their staff to keep working from home. But when the government pulls this simplified credit, I do think they will at some point when they pull it away, um, that's what they're going to be left filing. And that is more complicated. All right. But you know what? It, it's, if you do the work, you get the money, you know, Absolutely. and that's uh, a common thread <laughs> in our conversations from week to week. RSPs, uh, you would have had until March 1st to contribute to RSPs. That's right. So now uh, what you're looking for are all of those receipts. So if you made your contribution by the 1st of March, you will be issued a receipt from whichever institution you did your RSP contribution with. So if it's a bank, you're going to get a receipt from the bank. If it's a robo-advisor, it should be in your portal. Most of these receipts come in around the middle of March. Some take a little bit longer. Some are earlier. Don't forget them. And I also want to mention RSP aren't the only game in town. If you're thinking about your strategy for this year, do consider your tax-free savings account as well because your money grows tax-free in there. And also, if you're doing your planning for next year, you may find the CRA My Account portal is tremendously helpful for you. If you haven't signed up, get in there. The CRA has gone completely digital. I think the portal is really good. What it will tell you in there is how much room you have available for your RSP and your tax-free savings account. And that's helpful information. Yeah, I, I took advantage of that uh, myself and it is really helpful, you know, and we need the, 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 the leg up, you know, financially speaking, because costs to raise a family are going up, Leslie, and how can parents get ahead of this? Well, I'm a parent, you're a parent, you know this, you like know. it is not just in your head. The cost to raise your family right now is through the roof with inflation, pressures on groceries, gas, and just about everything you're spending money on. So extra important for parents right now, when you file your taxes, you're going to get assessed for what's called the GST HST credit. And that is targeted more so for lower income families, but you got to file your taxes in order to know if you qualify. You also need to file your taxes to figure out if you're getting the Canada child benefit and how much it is adjusted to income, by the way. But there's so much more. Our ESP contributions, childcare expenses. If you've got a child with disabilities, you can write that off. Medical expenses for new parents and whatever provincial and territorial credits are available to you, you're going to get those as well. So this is my pro tip is if you have 
kids and your, your tax situation is maybe not that straightforward, do work with a tax professional so that you don't um, like miss out on anything. And my second pro tip here is if this year you qualify for a decent amount of money for the Canada Child Benefit, what if you took that and you put it in your child's RESP, and then you're going to get the government grant, the Canada Education Savings Bond. It's like a win win. I think that's a triple win if I'm no counting kidding. all the wins there. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Make that money work for you. You mentioned medical expenses, Leslie, and that you might be maxed out with your benefit plans, but CRA allows you to claim qualified medical expenses. That's right. And again, I point to families here because it's really easy to max out your benefits across the board. Just imagine orthodontics, right? <laughs> Those tend to take our <laughs> medical costs way over, over um, what the benefits do provide. So uh, generally, uh, if you've got a couple thousand dollars worth of out-of-pocket medical expenses, please do look this up because there is a specific rule for, for you and your income bracket and how much you, you need to qualify. Um, but if you've got a whack of medical receipts that were not covered, do look into this credit. It is very, very powerful. And again, I point to families. Yeah. You know, and we talked about like uh, adjusting one's work situation. Um, some of those adjustments might have included moving, uh, you know, and even if you might be moving as a result of, uh, of school, if you've moved more than 40 kilometers to work or run your business or to study full time as a student, you can claim some of those moving costs. Absolutely. Things like uh, transportation and storage fees and realtor commissions, all of that can uh, be claimed on your taxes. So uh, guess what? During the pandemic, a lot of people moved around uh, for, for work and for school. So you may find yourself qualifying for this one too. You've listed in, in this piece as well in the star some easy to forget items and to include in your tax filing. You talk about donation receipts, student loan interest, tuition expenses. Those are the things that can't be forgotten. That's right. And they're so easy to forget. <laughs> so um, <laughs> do actually go. Here's my pro tip. Go into your email inbox because I know when I make uh, donations from time to time, the receipts get emailed to me and they just kind of go into a vortex and I forget about them. So now is the time to like get on into your email and figure out, do I have, uh, do I have these receipts lingering, usually unopened? Now is the time yeah. to print them off and or put your digital copy into the cloud. Create a folder, just create a little folder. Any folder. Donations. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, the biggest tip I think you have here in this piece is to make sure that you file on time. Don't be late. That's right. So the, the double whammy bad situation is if you're late and you owe money, you pay a late penalty and you pay interest on what you owe. So just don't do it. Even if you just filed on time, let's say you don't have the money to pay your tax bill just yet. Uh, you can like circumvent one of the two fees just by getting your return in on time. So so get it in on time. Uh, now is the time to get organized, uh, beat the rush a little bit. And, you know, we'll talk more in the future about what to do if you do get a return. Absolutely. Check out MeVest.ca, personal finance expert, MeVest founder, Hank and Dot's mom, Leslie Ann Scorgi. Always a pleasure, my friend. We'll do it again next week. Thanks, Jeff.